dear all namaste in this video i shall be discussing about a case of dns that is deviated nasal septum this is a sure short question to be asked in your practical so please be prepared for history taking examination investigations and treatment so let's start with the case first you should write the patient particulars mr ramesh sali say 28 years old male from pokhara who is sub cube by occupation this is very important in a case discussion on dns because the patient may have allergic rhinitis the patient may be a player he might be affected by injury to the nose leading to dns and sub keepers are prone for allergy or some other certain occupation that is allergic in nature like persons working in floor industry latex industry is the patient presented to ent opd with chief complaints of left nasal obstruction for 5 years in the exam don't make the case complicated take a very simple case so that you will be asked very few questions pertinent to that history and examination if you make the case complicated then there is a high chance that you may be confused in between so don't make it like that make it very simple in this case the patient has left nasal obstruction for last 5 years coming to history of present illness my patient was apparently well 5 years ago when the patient started having left nasal obstruction which was in serious onset and gradually progressive in nature initially it was intermittent but nowadays the obstruction persists throughout the day and that is aggravated by common cold and upper respiratory tract infections the obstruction was initially relieved on taking topical nose drops but the drops are not responding to nasal obstruction for last 3 months maybe the patient have been habituated for the nose drops leading to rhinitis medicamentosa occasionally patient may have diurnal variation of the nasal obstruction when it is bilateral obstruction suppose when the patient is having cold allergy the obstruction may be more in the morning time than the evening time in the evening time the allergens go up due to hot but in the morning time the allergens come down in the ground so that patient may have more bouts of allergic rhinitis in the morning time so dns does not cause any diurnal variation or the patient may complain that when the patient is sleeping on the bed on that position there will be obstruction and when the patient sleeps on the opposite position then there may be some form of nasal opening the patient also complains decreased sense of smell from the left nose there is occasional blood stain discharge from the left nasal cavity and occasional pain on the left cheek area and on the left side of face which is acute intermittent and more during the common cold and relieved with medicines the pain increases on bending down patients with chronic sinusitis may complain of facial heaviness but in acute sinusitis they may be severe headache which is one of the diagnostic criteria for sinusitis as well the patient does not give history of mouth breathing when the patient is having bilateral obstruction there will be mouth breathing and dryness of throat there is no fever headache sneezing itching watering of the eyes and no ear and throat complaints by presenting this line the examiner knows that the patient is not having allergic rhinitis this is all about positive and negative history in cases of dns if you have been given a case of allergic rhinitis or sinusitis then you have to take history about the orbit also patient itching of the eyes double vision or difficulty in vision like that in the past history there is no history of trauma which is very important trauma also may lead to the dns as i have already told there is no history of surgery in the past maybe some surgery of cleared palate to may lead to some form of nasal deviation history of diabetes mellitus hypertension tuberculosis are taken tuberculosis may lead to facial deformity or nasal deformity that may lead to nasal obstruction personal history is important patient's bladder and bowel habits patient's appetite and sleep are also normal sometimes nasal obstruction may lead to problem with the sleep patient may have occasional snoring smoking and alcohol both may lead to allergic rhinitis the patient may be taking some drug and patient may be allergic to some drugs that also has to be noted because allergic rhinitis may be associated with drug allergy also 
Sometimes there may be pets in the house like dogs, cats, basically furry animals and they also may lead to allergy. And family history of asthma, ATP, is to be asked for because ATP is a family allergy and asthma also may have family allergy. Now, the examiner may ask you a few questions regarding the history. Many of these have been already answered by me, so it will be easy for you when you present this case. Now moving to general examination. You have to look for pulse, BP, temperature, respiratory rate, pallor, ictus, clubbing, cyanosis, lymph node and edema. That's just to complete with the examination. Now systemic examination, cardiovascular system, respiratory system and periobrain are to be examined. Sometimes patients with allergic nonentis may have ronchi or wheeze, but patients with DNS may not have ronchi and wheeze. And now coming to local examination of nose and parental sciences, please refer to examination of nose and PNS by me in YouTube or slide share for full details of examination of nose and PNS. I will show few slides on examination of nose and PNS, skin and osteocardinus framework. You have to look for the skin over the nose and mid face. Osteocardinus framework is to be looked for. One of the important points here is the external deviation of nose and the proposis is best seen from the back and head end of the patient in sitting position. So you have to go to the back side of the patient to examine for proptosis and external deviation of nose. The eyes are to be examined for telecanthus and orbital movement in different directions. Now you have to palpate the nose and PNS also and the controversy exists in when to palpate the PNS and the oral cavity. As we are palpating the nasal bone and osteocardinus framework, it is wiser to complete the external palpation at the same time to avoid frequent touching of the patients. This is a common consensus. Now, nasal patency test by equal dispersal and continual test, nasal patency on the deviated side, on the left side, okay. The nasal patency is the comparative test. The nasal patency may be more and less, but nasal patency is not normal or decreased, okay. Just tell that nasal patency on the left nose is decreased in comparison to the right side, like that. In your case, on endoscopy, you will see DNS towards the left side. The patient may have right-sided inferior terminal hypertrophy. What does that mean? That means the right inferior terminal is either touching the floor or the middle terminate or the nasal septum that is hypertrophic terminate. After that you have to perform the posterior endoscopy, then olfactory function test, examination of other cranial lobes and examination of regional lymph nodes. Then relevant examination of ear and throat is to be performed. Now we have to be ready for case summary. The case summary includes chief complaints, relevant history of present illness, all positive, relevant family history, drug history, and relevant clinical examination, all positive findings. By that, you will make a provisional diagnosis. The provisional diagnosis is left-sided symptomatic DNS, but there is nothing called as provisional because person is having DNS to left side, then that is left-sided DNS only, maybe right-sided inferior terminal hypertrophy. Now the examiner may ask you what are the investigations to be performed for this patient. Usually we don't require any investigations but the gold standard investigation for nose and PNS is CT scan of nose and PNS, plain and coronal cords. Sometimes axial cords also but for DNS only we don't require the axial cords. Now comes the final diagnosis. In this case, provisional and the final diagnosis are same but according to CT scan if you find any pathology then you have to include that in the final diagnosis. Now, the examiner may ask you what is the treatment. The treatment of symptomatic DNS is septoplasty. When the patient is having simple DNS, patient does not require any treatment. Now, you should face all the questions on septal and sinus surgery because when there is DNS, the examiner may ask you regarding septoplasty, SMR, face, steps of face, complications, age. If you present the case like this, there is High chance that you will get good marks in the exam. Good luck for the exam. Thank you. Have a nice day.